Hi everybody, today's video is going to be explaining how you define magnet excitations and how you define a parametric in ANSYS. So we're going to start with the magnet excitation. These magnets right now are just labeled as vacuum, but what we're going to need to do is define them as neodymium magnets. So if you go to the ANSYS resources tab in Canvas, you'll see that there is a file called n42sh underscore 60c and there's the model that we're actually editing right now called ee511 defining permanent magnet excitations so go ahead and download this model and download this dot tab file so then open the model and you'll be here and now we need to define the permanent magnet excitations for these magnets. So we're going to start with the north left magnets. So hold control and select all these north left magnets. And then right click out in space, hit assign material. And then we're going to right click add material and we're going to title this N42SH north left. And then we're going to have to change the coordinate system to cylindrical and change the relative permeability to nonlinear. And then it'll give us the option for a BH curve. So then click BH curve, and you can click import data set, and then file type, change the file type to dot tab, and then you'll see this file that we downloaded. So select that file, and it's in the right units. It should be in amps per meter and Tesla, and then hit OK. And now we need to define the R, phi, and Z components of the magnets because they're angled. So if you go to the ANSYS resources tab and you click the E511 permanent magnet unit vector dot PNG, you'll see this little drawing I made that shows you the magnetic field vectors for the north left and right magnets and the south left and right magnets. So using trigonometry, because they're 100 degrees apart, we can find out that the unit vectors of these field lines will be in magnitude of cosine 40 and sine 40. And we know the direction that these unit vectors point in. So if we look from the top on, down onto the xy plane we can see that the theta hat vector is pointing to the left and the r hat vector is pointing up or radially looking from this angle so what we need to do is we need to define the unit vector magnitudes in accordance with the direction that these vectors point so this table tells you what direction the vector should be pointing in. So we know the magnitude and the direction will be given by, so north left, the theta hat vector will be negative, the r hat vector will be positive. So first let's just input the magnitudes. So go back to ANSYS and the r component will be 0 0.766044. 0 0.766044 and then the theta component or phi component some sources say theta some sources say phi ANSYS uses phi I should have used phi for this drawing but in this case they're the same thing so the phi component is 0 0.6442788 0 0.6442788 hit enter and we can click validate material and we can hit OK, and now we've got this project material. And hit OK, and now we've defined all the north-left magnets. So next we need to define the north-right, south-left, and south-right. And since we already have this material in here, so we can go ahead and select by holding control and left-clicking all the north-right magnets, and then right-click out in space, assign material, and now we can search N42SH and then select N42SH north left and then 
instead of clicking add material you can click clone material and then we'll retitle this N42SH north right and the magnitude should already be in here um, I just realized I forgot to change the direction on the last one so just hit OK for this so you can go back so you can go back to either of them and edit them so I'm gonna go back to N42SH north left and then click view slash edit and I forgot to change the R hat or the theta hat to negative so theta hat is negative and R hat is positive so need to change this to negative hit OK and then I'm gonna go to N42SH north right view slash edit so now we need to make sure these are correct so north right both of them are positive so this one should be fine so you can just hit cancel so it's already fine and then hit OK so now just double checking you can see here here's all the north left magnets and then here's all the north right magnets and now I'm gonna go ahead and select all the south left magnets sorry if I'm kinda of rushed this is like my third time recording it because it keeps failing uh, let's just check it's still recording <laughs> All right. Um, so I've selected all the south left magnets right click out in space assign material and I'm going to search N42SH and just select either of them and then clone material retitle it south left and then we're going to refer to the table and see south left is positive theta and negative R so take away that minus sign put a minus sign there validate material hit OK OK, now we define all the south left. Now, I'm going to just, since these are all vacuum in here, I'm going to select all. And this should select all the south right magnets. Right click out in space, assign material, search N42SH, north, left, and then clone material, retitle this north, or retitle this south, right, and then refer to the table. Both of them should be negative for the south right magnet. So change this to a minus. Validate. OK. OK. Now we've got all our materials defined for the magnet excitation. Make sure I got them all. Good. Now we're going to add an optometric so that we can find out what the peak torque angle of this motor is. So I've already put all these variables in here. So this defines the number of turns per winding. This defines the peak current applied. This defines the electric frequency. This defines the electrical angle phase shift this defines the U phase current, this defines the V phase current, this defines the W phase current, this defines the rotational speed of the rotor, and this defines one electrical cycle which is just the inverse of the electrical frequency. So what we need to do is we need to sweep that variable delta in order to find what angle generates the maximum torque. So make sure you go to one elect cycle right click that and then select properties make sure it has a five right here so make sure it's the stop time is one elect cycle and the time step is one elect cycle divided by five because the file on canvas might have like 50 or something like that and that is just so that when you run one electrical cycle, the 
torque plot, the torque versus time plot will actually be like somewhat accurate. It'll have like a torque ripple. So with this, we're just reducing the sampling rate because we don't need a very high sampling rate for the purposes of finding the peak torque. So just make sure it's one elect cycle stop time and time step is one elect cycle divided by five. Now we can right click optometrics, left click add, then click parametric, then click add, and then make sure the variable is delta. And then we're going to start it from 180 to 360 because I already know what it's going to be about. And we're going to step it by 10. So hit add. Make sure yours is variable delta, start 180, stop 360, step 10, add, then hit OK, and hit OK. And then we can rename this. Uh, elect angle, then hit save. Make sure you got all this saved. All this motion setup stuff is already defined. All the phase currents are defined for you. The vector potential is defined for you. All we're doing here is the magnet excitation and the electrical angle. So now our file should be ready to import to the virtual browser. So remember you go to software hub, software so you go to Software Hub, and then you're on the Software Hub, blah, blah, blah. That was in the first pre-lab tutorial. So now we're here. You can click My Files, Temporary Files, Upload Files, and then go to wherever you have your file saved. Um, and then... Go ahead and open it. Remember this PC temporary files. And I'm going to go ahead and full screen it right now. <clears throat> so double click on Maxwell 2D Design to look at the 2D design. And just checking, we have all our materials in here. And all we need to do right now is right click elect angle and then click analyze. And here you can see the progress. So right now it's running five time steps per electrical cycle for deltas of 180, 190, 200, 210, etc. until 360, the way we set up the parametric. And so first, let's take a look at the torque versus time. So right-click results, and then left-click create transient report rectangular plot. And then you're going to click moving torque, and the primary sweep will be time. You can click new report. And here it's showing us this really undersampled plot of the torque over time. And you can see it's only the five time steps we chose, but you can see this family of values for delta 180, 190, 200, 210, 220, and it'll keep creating these plots until it gets to 360, and we can actually create a better graphical representation of the torque versus the angle if we right-click results, create transient report rectangular plot, and then we're going to select moving torque. And then we can actually type in here. And we're going to go ahead and type mean, and then in parentheses, moving one dot torque, like this. And then we're going to do the primary sweep of delta. And now, if we go ahead and hit new report, we'll be able to see that it's plotting delta on the x axis and the mean moving torque on the y-axis. And basically, this will be what you submit to Canvas. I'd just like you to take a screenshot of this completed torque plot and then upload it to the assignment. Let me find it. Or I'm going to have to exit full screen here. So it'll be called 
ANSYS assignment, magnet excitation, and parametric. So once you finish this plot in ANSYS, take a screenshot and upload it here. And the peak torque is here. It should be around 55 Newton meters, as long as you sweep it from 180 to 360 degrees. All right. Make sure you guys do it. I'm not going to finish playing it. Tricky. All right. Thanks, guys.